ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to our graduation ceremony. Seniors usually have that smile of freedom, proclaiming, no more high school after this year. However, inside their mind, they, they are making their life-changing decisions about college. Where to go, what to major. My name is Sean Wong. As for me, my goal was to reach one of the top schools. At the expense of free time, I tried to get straight A's, participate in various events, and study for SAT. You know, the common formula for getting to Ivy League schools. On a Wednesday evening, after Bible study at the Sunrise, God asked me this question. If you ended up going to a community college, would you be willing to accept and be content with my plan? Why should we always be content with God's plan? Well, that's easy to answer, because God's plan is the best for us. But doing so is not so easy. How can we be content with God's plan if God's plan is to take our effort away, take our possession away, and take our dream away? We can't just let it go, can we? Well, not if we don't hold on to all these things as our own in the first place. He died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Second Corinthians 5.15 If we give up our lives to Christ, as God wants us to, why wouldn't we be satisfied with anything God has planned for us? Above all, everything belongs to God. People usually value and look for their material prosperity. There is an American family that my family is really good friends with. They are a Christian family with two lovely kids. The husband was a member of the administration team in Merrill Lynch. The wife is a Harvard University medical degree graduate. She also had a great job. Several years ago, the husband heard the calling from Christ wanted him to work with a Christian nonprofit organization in China. <laughs> <laughs> called the Evergreen Service. They gave up the comfortable lifestyle, their kids' education, yes, American education, and better living conditions in America, and went to a secondary level overpopulated city in a development. Yes, there was struggle, but they decided to give it away to Christ and bring the whole family to China. Now the husband only receives stipends, enough for basic living. The wife is homeschooling their children. However, because of them giving away their good life to Christ, beautiful things have happened. The Evergreen Service has reached many urban and rural Chinese residents, including orphans, we have a camp program for Chinese youths. I've been there just such a now. It's awesome. <laughs> um, and most amazingly, the family helped me to contact Horizon Christian School, which started the transformation of my life. Nonetheless, giving away our life is not just about giving away our worldly physical prosperity. There are more aspects that our sinful nature wants to hold. A man lives in a nice house, two stories, and each has five rooms. One day, he heard someone knocking at the door. He opened it, and there stood Jesus, asking for a place to live. He said, of course, my Lord, I'll give you my best room to stay in. Later, he heard someone else knocking on the door. He opened the door, but this time, Satan came in. So the man followed with Satan the whole day and finally pushed him out of the house. He was exhausted, injured badly. He asked Jesus, why would you help me? Jesus replied, look at this house. You have 10 rooms and you only gave me one. The man realized something immediately and gave another eight rooms to Christ, only leaving himself one to save me. The second day, Satan tried to sneak into his house again. So he tried his best to get Satan out. After another day of fight, he can barely stand up. The man looked at his old and new wounds and asked Jesus, Why don't you get him out? Jesus replied, Let's turn this around. Give me all your keys and let me be the owner of the house. You can be the one who stays in my house. When Satan came for the third time, although scared, the man 
remember that it's not the owner of the house anymore. It was Jesus who went downstairs and opened the door to face Satan. When Satan saw Jesus, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, he apologized for knocking on the wrong door and went away. Truly, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Matthew 16.25 Our road to salvation is easy to give one or a few more rooms of our whole house to Christ. It could even be the best room, but we always have that one private personal room that we want to keep it to ourselves for the end. We put our own goals in there in case things go wrong. We put our own plan in there to keep the worldly social status. We put our design in there in case we won't get enough satisfaction. We refuse to give it away to Christ, but try to manage it through our sinful nature, defending it against the fallen world. But we will eventually find ourselves breathless, desperate, and helpless. It is such an honor for me to have the chance to stand here and speak, but this won't be possible if there wasn't a family who would give their lives over to Christ. My fellow graduates and guests, God has the best plan for you. I challenge and encourage you to hold on to the faith and give every and last room to Christ. Thank you very much.